Welcome to church. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Can you kill this mic here so I can grab that other one and not make noise and praise everybody's ear drum? We're good? Oh, not yet. Now you are. Okay. Okay. Number two. Thank you. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the story that Dennis told, but I disagree with the moral. I think it would, should be, and the name of the story should be, Don't Mess With Sweet. <laughs> I'll take that under advisement. Yeah. <laughs>
as you have always obeyed, listened intently, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Thank God for verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it's God's will that we're after. The only decision we really make is who we're going to serve. We can serve this mind that we have, this selfishness, this rotten nature. Or we can choose to be selfless and have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Which is righteousness. That's what the mind of Christ is, is righteousness. Amen. What did Adam and Eve have? They had the mind of Christ. Right? Didn't they? Until they chose not to have the mind of Christ. God had said, let us make man in our image. And obviously that wasn't shape only, right? What would you see if you were to look at Adam and Eve before sin? What would you see? Happy couple. You'd see God, wouldn't you? He, they were made in His image. I mean, obviously not that they were God. God is way beyond. But you would see God in them. And what? How? How is? Uh, how is this world supposed to be transformed? By seeing Christ in you. Yeah. Right? And he's not, the, the world isn't going to see Christ in you unless you have the mind of Christ. So I guess what we're trying to discuss here is maybe how we obtain this mind of Christ. Right? As long as they obeyed and listened to God, Adam and Eve, whose mind did they have? Christ. The mind of Christ. Right? But when they decided to listen to the enemy, right, and obeyed and listened to Satan, what mind did they have? Selfish. Carnal. Selfish. Carnal. Satanic. Yeah. The mind of the enemy. Right? What was Satan's sin? Pride. Pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that self is the root of pride? Yeah. So what was he looking at? He said, I am going to be like God, right? And the Bible says that he was puffed up. He was looking at himself. You know, that's our very nature. That's who we look at, ourself. Yeah. We look at ourself. He was so pretty, he fell in love with himself. He fell in love with himself, yeah. Self is the root of everything. Self. We have to be extinguished of it. Pride is the root of self only. That's what pride is. If we focus upon Jesus, sin disappears. We have the mind of Christ. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what do we think? 
Let us turn to Genesis chapter 3. I have to open the Bible. My Bible is falling apart. I hate to let this one go. You know, it's like getting a new Bible and starting over again. You got to learn all the pages. I got these pages in my mind. I can see the pages. Now if I want to go find something in a new Bible, I got to break in a new Bible. I got to redo my whole mind again. I think it's probably a good thing. But I'm in ch chapter three, uh, verse one. We're going to start at verse one. I'm uh, I'm going to go into this new Bible kicking and screaming. But here it is. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to, unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall. Surely not die. Is that not the first sermon on immortality? There it is. And did she not have to disbelieve God to believe the enemy? She did. For God knoweth that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them were opened. Opened. Open to what? Good and evil. Open to themselves. Ah. That's what they saw too, isn't it? There you go, fellas. What did they what did they do once they realized, oh wait, I make it. I make it. Where did the focus go to? Hmm. You know, I want to thank God that it doesn't stop there. And we can move down to verse 15, and it says what? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. What is this enmity that God puts there? It's a hatred for sin. When you hate sin because sin is who you are and that's what your nature is, you ought to thank God. Because he put that in there supernaturally. That's the enmity that you have for sin. Praise the Lord. Let us turn to Hebrews 1 3. Can you get there to say amen? Who being in the brightness of his glory in the express image of his person. Did you hear that? Who, who's this talking about? This is Jesus, right? And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Christ, brothers and sisters, is the image of God. You can find that again in Colossians 1, if you want to turn there. Colossians 1 and 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? And once again, how did Jesus overcome? What, what was this mind that he had? was selfless, right? Did he have a thought for himself? There's only one place in the Bible you find that Jesus had a thought for himself. That was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. 
And that prayer reveals his true character. Because he said in his humanness, Father, I, I, don't, I don't want this. You know, um, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, thy will be done. I don't know if God will ever call me to uh, the kind of stress that would make me sweat drops of blood. I don't even know if my heart can take that before I would just die. But it's a very human possibility. And it certainly happened to Jesus. And I don't know that it ever happened to another man, but I'm sure it has. Let us turn to Romans. This is not a somber message, everybody. We want to have the mind of Christ. This is something that's attainable. All we have to do is surrender. Paul's having this struggle here, okay? In uh, Romans chapter 7. I'm going to read a little bit from Romans chapter 7. I'm going to begin in verse 14. I'm going to read it from the American Standard Version. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin, for which I do, I, I know not. For not what I would, that do I practice. But what I hate, that I do. But if what I would not that I do, I consent unto the law that it is good. So now it is no more I that do it, but sin which dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but to do that which is good is not. Do you hear that? What is he saying? I'm not even capable of doing the right thing. You hear that? This is Paul speaking. This is our brother Paul. I mean, if you know what this man did, if he's saying that he can't, then I certainly can't. You certainly can, right? But the greater message is here is what? For the good which I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I practice. Did I skip? My phone moved. What verse were we at? We're on 18. 18, okay, so I did. So I, I'm on 18. Okay, thank you. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but to do that which is good is not. For the good which I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that I practice. But if what I would not, that I do, it is no more I that do it, but sin which dwelleth in me. I find then... In the, I find then the law that to me who would do good, evil is present. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see a different law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity under the law of sin, which is in my members. Wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me out of the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then I of myself with, my, with the mind indeed serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Thank God it doesn't stop there, huh? It goes into chapter 8. Thank God for chapter 8. 
There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are what? In Christ Jesus. There it is, brothers and sisters. That word therefore, thank God for that word therefore. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness, or you could take that word out and say, or the mind of Christ, that the mind of Christ, of the law, might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Do you see this? This, this, this has to be crucified. There's no fixing it. It, there's, there's no hope. There's no hope. It's absolute wretchedness. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, but be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of the mind of Christ. Righteousness. Ricky, put a little paper in here this in your uh, bulletin. I'd like to read a little part of this right here. Um, you got a sentence and then a paragraph, and then it starts out with the second paragraph with Paul. That's where I want to go. Are you there? Paul was in such constant dread lest his evil propensities should get the better of him that he was constantly battling with firm resistance, unruly appetites, and passions. If the great apostle felt like trembling in view of his weakness, who has a right to feel self-confident and boastful? The moment we begin to feel self-sufficient and confident, then we are in danger of a disgraceful failure. Where is the good doing in any man in this world who has not the righteousness, has not the mind of Christ? Not there. It's not there. It's not there at all. What does the mind of Christ do? Life, peace, joy, right? Yes, the spirit. All the fruits of the spirit, right? What did it do to Jesus? Same thing. Confidence. Confidence in his father. Sent him to the cross. Yes, he out. It, it it emptied him of himself, didn't it? So what will it do for us? What will fill this place? Something's going to fill the place. We have to make a decision.
What mind do we have now? Mind of Christ. If we have the mind of Christ, then we have righteousness. Amen. Peace, joy, truth. If we have the mind of Christ, we have the victory over every besetting sin. Everyone. We realize that the battle is not ours, but the Lord's. And He has won the battle. 1 Corinthians 8, 2 says, well, let's just go there. Easy book to find. 1 Corinthians 8, 2. Read this in Vespers the other night. Y'all there? And if any man think he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet, as he ought to know it. What does that do? What does that verse do to pride? Extinguishes it, doesn't it? I mean, pride is, is not our friend. For the very verse 2. Verse 2? I mean, verse 1. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, puffeth up. But charity edifies. Love. Love. You know, the Bible says in 1 Samuel, um, the rebellion, for rebellion is as, as the sin of witchcraft. What do we see in this world today? Constant rebellion. Everywhere you look, on every TV show, on every stinking thing you come across. Matthew 18 and verse 3. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted. Converted. What does the word converted mean? Changed. To undergo conversion. <laughs> well, you're one version and then you're another version. Yes. To change from one form or function to another. To alter the physical or chemical nature of properties, or especially in manufacturing. To bring about a religious, I hate it when you use the word, I think, conversion. To bring over from one belief, view, or party to another. We have one mind that we're born with, right? This is the mind that's constantly with us, trying to control us, because it's the very nature of who and what we are in this flesh. But as that discussion went on in Romans chapter 7, there's this big struggle, right? To have the mind of Christ. And to allow him to lead. It's easy to say it. It's real easy to talk about it. But to get the victory. To allow him to have the victory. What is the little thing in your life. That you're allowing. The devil. The enemy of God. To gain the victory. I want to see this place blown up with the righteousness of God. Let's turn to Ephesians.
Ephesians chapter 4. No, chapter 6 is what I'm after. The armor, the Christian armor. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the